Hello and welcome to ATP Report. It's the Katie and Barry Show. Joining me from beautiful, sunny Southern Mexico <laughs> is the wonderful and not yet tan Katie Hopkins. Hi, Katie. I know I need to work on this tan. I really do. But even from Mexico, I'm going to ask and remind our lovely audience to uh, join our ATP family and text the word TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, TRUTH, to the number 88202 so that we can send our content straight to their phones absolutely free. Thank you for mentioning it. Now from good news to weird news, uh, in Minneapolis, uh, the sign of the site of the George Floyd death, um, if you may remember last summer, the city council had the absolutely brilliant idea to disband the police, stop giving money to police officers who are the enemy of the people, and to send out, you know, social workers to handle crime and stuff like that. Now, after crime has just exploded through the roof, they want the police back. Ooh, what a novel idea. On top of that, the city is getting ready for get this massive rioting while they have just paid out some fortune to the George Floyd family. What do you know about it? Yeah, so speaking to my contacts in Minnesota and Minneapolis, I spent quite a period of time there when I was on the road in America last. Uh, downtown Minneapolis at that point was still a wreckage really and completely abandoned by anybody that cared about themselves or their possessions. Um, and my contact there in Minneapolis says it is literally being turned into a war zone. It is being prepared for war. So as the dates count down towards the trial date starting for George Floyd, um, there is a real sense that the garrisons are going to be moving in, the National Guard moving in uh, and people are clearing out. There is fear once again in the suburbs, because as you'll know, you know, that's where the George Floyd kind of rampaging really started off was in those poorer suburbs. And then that moved to the richer suburbs as well. Uh, people there are fearful that their homes will be raided. They're working out what do they do with their valuables. I mean, that's the preparation people are putting in. Meanwhile, of course, 27 million pounds just paid out to George Floyd's family, and that has caused all sorts of difficulties with the jury selection, because of course it's kind of skewed that jury, hasn't it? If you pay out money to a family, what does it already suggest? What will that do to a jury? So all of that jury process has been thrown up in the air, and there is even talk, Barry, that I'm hearing now of the trial actually being moved out of Minneapolis altogether to try and calm the sense that war is going to break out on those streets. Where would they move it to? Well, constitutionally, you're supposed to get a fair trial. So wherever fairness would reign, I don't know exactly where that is. Uh, speaking of the money, by the way, it was dollars, not pounds, but I think- Oh, are. sorry, uh, I apologize. No worries. You are a Brit after all. You're um, lucky you didn't get pesos from me at the moment. <laughs> in Mexico. Yes, dollars, $27 million. Thank you, Barry. The Black Lives Matter movement uh, was quite involved in what happened in Minneapolis. And supposedly they've raised somewhere around $100 million. And as best as anybody can tell, not a single dollar out of $100 million has gone to a single Black family, person, or cause. Where did all the money go? Is it all to promote their, as they call it, self-avowed communist manifesto um, and their philosophy about changing America into a communist utopia? Any idea? Are they just profiting off it themselves? Is it a business? What do you, what do you think they did with all the dough? I think... Um... A business is certainly where it's at. I think business transactions are happening all over the place. People that have the strategic ability to uh, enable this movement to move faster. Uh, and I see how quickly certain individuals, Meghan Markle and others, were very quick to move into Black Lives Matter territory. It was almost as if they'd had a, a visit from a representative of the organization and were offered a large check. But that is pure speculation on my part. I think what we can safely say is 
you know, if you go to those places that were burnt down in Minneapolis by Black Lives Matter, it is the very poorest black people who have absolutely suffered the most from Black Lives Matter. There is no dollar store for them anymore. There is no cup store for them to get their necessities. You know, the pharmacy in their area burnt down, the garage burnt down, all of these things, fundamental things, women and men need to feed their families destroyed. And those are the people that got impacted the most and they haven't seen any money from anyone. Yeah, it's, it was devastating. I watched it and, and when you see uh, the camera crews go through the neighborhoods, yeah. now, Katie, you see the Walgreens gone oh. to the ground and the Kroger burned to the ground and the gas stations gone and the post office. I can't imagine these large American corporations investing the money that will take literally billions to go back in there and rebuild the infrastructure. If for no other reason, they probably couldn't get fire insurance. The yeah. self-destructive mentality is just brutal on the people that supposedly were the ones wanting things to get better. And they're the ones suffering the most. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it, there is also, I can, you know, I can feel it, even sat here in Mexico, it, downtown Minneapolis, that sense of real foreboding, of intimidation, people scuttling. There's a certain way people walk when they feel under threat. They move very quickly and they hug the buildings. That's how people walk now in downtown. You know, the big bill, um, billboards that Uber put up saying, if you don't think Black Lives Matter, get out of our cars. You know, they were huge billboards, just very aggressive, very threatening. And that was back, you know, six months ago. Goodness only knows what that place feels like now. And I, and I hope to head there soon to be able to report from the ground if I can. Well, we will do it a live shot with you if you're able to get there. Uh, on a related black cultural note, um, maybe you can explain this to me as a Brit from the outside looking in, because as an American, I can't make heads or tails out of this. Culturally, we have iconic cartoons being canceled left and right, you know, Dumbo, mm. Peter Pan, Pepe Le Pew, they're all gone because of their inherent racism or classism or whatever you want to call it. And they are cartoons. And um, we have the same problem in sports and in books uh, that are being canceled left and right. Can you explain this to me? There's a singer who just performed on the Grammys named um, Cardi, Cardi B. Mm. She, she brags about her former life as a stripper and a prostitute. And now she's quite famous uh, for sexual songs and so on. I watched her video the other night um, and she and another uh, very attractive young lady uh, were on a bed together on stage and they sang the words to this song, W-A-P, and then acted it out on stage, which basically is simulating sex between the two ladies. And that somehow is culturally okay within not only their community, but the music community as, at large and a national network that broadcast it. And yet we censor cartoons that are meant to make people laugh. What's going on with culture in America? Uh, yeah, I wish I, I, I'm sure I'm not the uh, cultural icon that's required to explain it, but I, I look on like you do, uh, Barry, and I've watched the clip obviously. And, and you know, I would say that they're very dexterous ladies. You know, they can move in ways, darling, that I can't. So kudos to them for having muscles in places that most of us don't. Um, but it is a weird idea that certain things, traditional kind of stuff that we were brought up in is now put in that basket of things that are definitely wrong. But we would love it, wouldn't we, if it was replaced by something modern and forward thinking that was right, that was appropriate. But of course it's not. It's replaced by this. And then you, you know, one of the things that struck me watching the clip, of course, is that the crowd is going wild, or at least there's the sort of semblance that people love this. And they think we're, we're weird for not getting it. And I'm sure you and I are on the same page that we don't really care what her past life is. Women have got to do what women have got to do to get by, prostitute, stripper, whatever. My personal view, maybe yours is, you know, people's lives are their own business. But on a stage, 
being applauded, as you say, by a network. You know, I just think it's, you know, I like this idea that we build each other up, you know, build, women build women to be strong women and mm, tough. I, I think it's debasing. Is, is it a suggestion that all that these ladies are good for is that, is having sex on stage? I, I don't think it builds them up. It, I don't feel like it makes them strong women. I don't get it. Yeah, I, look, I'm, I'm fairly libertarian and I don't care if somebody needs or wants to have that kind of life and they're not hurting others, if that is the case, no one else is getting hurt and they're not getting hurt, go for it. But like you said, there are certain cultural standards that should be the minimum to be on national television. And I would admonish our viewers today, go get the words to WAP. I'm not gonna tell you what the word WAP means because it's very sexual in nature. And the song is very sexual in nature. And the dance was not leaving anything uh, to the imagination. It was rather graphic. I just am pointing out the incredible double standard that this sort of thing is culturally and sociologically acceptable, not only in private, but in public to accolades. And Pepe Le Pew and Dumbo and Dr. Seuss are offensive. I just can't wrap my arms around the double standard that we have gotten to the point that certain things are just wrong and unacceptable and certain things that debase people are still okay. And I just don't get it. No, I, I, I totally understand. And I, I suppose I feel the same way for my teenage daughters. You know, because while they're online, much of what they're scrolling through on their endless scrolling is young women doing these sorts of actions that I just think, how many times do you need to see that? And how is that entertaining or, or keeping your brain occupied? I don't know. I, and I, sound, I know I sound like my mother, which is a concern. But, you know, I just wish they would be watching something at least funny or entertaining or worthwhile. Just something better. Yeah, I'd like to point out, by the way, that these are the lowest ratings in Grammy television history. Oh. And maybe it's because what they're putting out for public consumption is really not culturally significant, but rather mm -hmm. uh, we should feel sorry for the people that think that's entertainment. But maybe you're right. I'm becoming my mom and dad and so are you. <laughs> <laughs> It's terrifying, it really is. I wanted to tell you something, uh, Barry, as well about Scotland, if I may, even though that seems like distant and remote, uh, but in the very north of Great Britain is this place called Scotland. I think many of our listeners will know. Scotland just came out and went, great news, great news, everybody. We're gonna be at COVID restriction level zero by June. By June, great news, level zero. And of course, people were celebrating. I was watching it blow up on Twitter. Yes, you know, all this sort of William Wallace and kind of freedom and all of that. It turns out, Barry, this is a massive deception that you and I and many of our viewers and listeners will have seen coming because level zero, which you think is like baseline freedom, has got a whole bunch of restrictions. Level zero still means you're not allowed to go and socialize when you want. Uh, nightclubs and late night entertainment won't be open. You're not allowed to get together in groups of uh, 50 or more. Only three houses can meet. Social distancing, masks, and that's level zero. Can you see the sleight of hand? You know, we're replacing freedom and normal with a new normal, which we've talked of, but this new normal involves all of these restrictions on your freedom still being imposed by the state. And then watching people celebrate, I'm kind of screaming at them going, stop, you're being tricked, you're being fooled, you know, you're being taken for a ride. And I can see this coming to America. I guess that's my point. God forbid, and I'm disgusted by the news that they consider that acceptable. Hey, great news. It's level zero. However, we redefine normal and you yes. are prisoners in your own country. Boo you, Scotland. Yeah. Exactly right. Exactly. Makes you wonder, Barry, what is, you know, what we used to have before? What was that in their, in their new numbering system? What were we? Minus two? Minus five? I don't know. I don't get the system right. I don't know. No. <laughs> I really don't. 
Thanks, Katie. I appreciate you coming on as usual. Great, great job today. And thank you for watching. Uh, for Katie and Barry, uh, thanks for joining us on ATP Report.